Happy Wednesday to you all, and uh, welcome to today's lesson, Thermal Energy, Temperature, and Ice Cream. We're going to start out talking about temperature, actually reviewing temperature again, and then uh, we're going to go into making some ice cream and hopefully apply some of the physics concepts that we've been learning about temperature. So temperature, again, is just simply, it's a measurement of the movement of molecules. It's, it's a way of measuring how much thermal energy they have by measuring how fast they are moving. So what happens when something freezes, you might ask? Well, when something freezes, like water, let's take water for example, pure water. When pure water freezes, the thermal energy is exiting the water and the particles start to move closer together because they're not moving as quickly. When they move quicker, they're kind of moving farther apart. But when they slow down, when the thermal energy is leaving, remember thermal energy goes from warm to cold. So like when you put the ice cube tray in your, in your freezer, the job of the refrigerator and the freezer is to suck away all the thermal energy. So when you put your food in there, uh, the next day or in a couple hours you open up, the food is like, I don't know, 30 degrees or whatever your thermometer temperature is set at in the refrigerator because it sucks away the thermal energy. Well, that's what the job of the freezer is. You put the water in there in the ice cube trays and the molecules slow down and they get close together. And then something weird happens when they reach the temperature of 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. The, this is a weird water molecule, but pretend this is a water molecule. They form something called lattices. They form bonds with each other. And in a ice situation, it, it looks something like this. If you could continue stacking these on top of each other and around each other, it makes an ice lattice. Okay? So you notice I said in pure water, it will freeze at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you have impurities in your water, the impurities get in the way of the molecules bonding together. And so it actually has to, you have to cool it beyond 32 degrees to get the water molecules to push away whatever impurities are in the water so that it will form those lattices, which is really the principle behind in the wintertime when we throw salt on our roads to actually prevent ice from forming on the roads, which makes it a whole lot safer. What happens is that ice that we throw, and I, and I have some here, it's a, a combination of calcium chloride, sodium chloride, and magnesium chloride. And what that does is it gets in the way of the uh, water molecules being able to form bonds, okay? Or in the fact that if you have ice on your driveway and you throw this stuff on there, it actually gets in between those bonds and pushes them apart. And so it could be all the way down. This is good to like minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit. You could have minus 15 degree day, spread this out, and it will melt the ice on the driveway because it's breaking, it's interrupting those bonds, it's suppressing them, all right? suppressing those bonds from forming. Okay, so we're gonna make some ice cream and we're gonna use these principles that we that we just learned. So what I've got here, and you can do this at home, it's totally safe and it's kind of fun, and I know you guys have probably done it in elementary school, but you probably didn't understand exactly what was going on. So I've got some cream that I'm going to put into a quart size bag, and then I've got a tablespoon of sugar and then I'm going to put in one teaspoon of vanilla because, you know, I love vanilla ice cream. It's kind of great. And at this point, you can put different kinds of syrups in there if you wanted to make um, raspberry, strawberry, chocolate. You can do all that kind of stuff. And then what I want to do is I want to get the air out of here and seal it up. I know you can't see it, but I will show you and then mix that up a little bit. Now, in our other bag, which is a gallon Ziploc bag, I want to fill it about half full with ice. And I have got 
ice cubes here. Absolutely half full with that. And then I'm going to put my quarter cup of ice in there. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to start melting this ice rather quickly. And this bag will end up being, in a large part, water. But that water will actually be colder than 32 degrees, which is needed if we're going to turn the water that is in this cream into a solid because this obviously has some impurities in it. It's not just pure water. So we're going to have to get the temperature to go below 32 degrees Fahrenheit in order for the water in this cream to begin to form those lattices and become a solid. That makes sense? So in a way, what I'm going to be doing here is proving to you that the salt that I threw in here is actually going to lower the freezing point of water well beyond 32 degrees. Dude, what I'm going to do right now is I've got to fill the rest of this up with ice and then I'm going to shake it for nine minutes and I will come back on when I have some ice cream. Five minutes later. Right, I'm back. Um, five minutes later, we've got Pretty solid ice cream here, and I'll taste that in a minute. But I'm going to take this thermometer and shove it down in there and let that sit while I have some of this ice cream here. All right, let me get a spoon. All right, let's see what this stuff tastes like. You see, it has a nice creamy consistency. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Very good stuff. I think I could have put a little more sugar in, though. But it's really good. I'll save that for later. I haven't had lunch yet. Pull up the old thermometer, and I am reading minus five degrees Celsius. Okay, five degrees below zero Celsius. It actually took 32 degree ice and lowered its temperature. And it allowed then the ice to melt because it was drawing away the thermal energy from the cream and allowing it to get cold enough to form those lattices and actually become a solid. A very good solid at that. You guys should be able to answer all of the questions if you listened well to this video because within my explanation of what was happening here, you got all the questions answered. Good luck, it was nice talking to you guys and uh, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday.